This is an interview with the authors of the paper Transformer Memory as a Differentiable Search Index. I have done a comprehensive review of this paper yesterday. I've released it just before this video, so be sure to check that out. The authors today have actually seen my review and will dive right into the matter. During this interview, you will not only learn much more about the paper itself, but also the research project itself, what went well, what didn't, and what the authors think of the future of the field. This is super duper interesting. It's an absolute pleasure to interview all of these people and that's possible because of you. So continue to let me know in the comments what you think, how I can make this content better. Thank you to everyone who shares out these videos, to everyone who's part of our Discord community, to all the supporters on Patreon and so on. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello everyone. Today I'm here with Ite and Don Metzler who are authors of the paper Transformer Memory as a Differentiable Search Index, which I find really cool, really inspiring, uh, very creative, and very happy that you are here. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Um, this paper is a bit special, right? Because it, it takes a little bit of uh, thinking outside the box, I think, to overcome or to arrive at the conclusion, hey, let's just store the entire data set into transformer weights, or you can frame it in whatever way you want, but it is uh, not an obvious idea. How did you get the idea that you want to try something like this? Uh, yeah, so maybe I'll just share a little bit from my point of view and, and Don can, can go next about his thoughts. Uh, so I think for from my side, I'm mainly interested of like, you know, understanding like this is more of like understanding the properties of transformers and you know how many documents can transformers encode in the parameters and you know like uh, and then obviously like retrieval is a good way to test whether a model is able to like generalize like what and digest what it has like in, you know encoded in memory. So I think from my point of view, it's more more of like uh, you know trying to see what. Transformers are capable of and and pushing the limits of memorization, uh, and and yeah. So I think that's uh from my point of view. Uh, I mean one of the more the, the 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 reasons why uh we thought of this at the start. Uh, yeah. Maybe Don can share some some thoughts as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, taking just a you know sort of a step back. Um, this paper is somewhat tied to this paper that we published sometime last year called Rethinking Search. Um, which laid out kind of our, our vision for, you know, how we can bring the latest and greatest in machine learning, natural language understanding to bear on sort of information retrieval problems. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, interest in, in this space recently. And so one of the things that we talked about in that paper um, was this, I mean, essentially this idea, um, you know, how, how to essentially take these large language models that exist, which understand relationships between sequences of tokens, and imbue them with an understanding of uh, documents, right? Because usually these sequences of tokens come from documents, right? Um, but I've never seen anyone explicitly model that. Um, and so from my point of view, you know, sort of more as a kind of IR researcher, and, you know, it's great that, you know, Yi uh, sort of has more of the machine learning NLP background. Um, you know, we, we decided to come together and say, like, hey, what, what can we actually do here um, to... To study this, you know, is it is this a crazy idea? Is this even possible? Um, and so, one of the things that you know we'd hope to do is uh, actually see if we can build like this idea of you know not even a, like an evolution of language models that are more of like corpus type of models, right? Where you have documents now, and in these types of models, potentially not we didn't do it necessarily here, but in the future, right? You can under have models that actually understand relationships between documents. Um, and, you know, we, we established this, okay, how can you, um, you know, model relationships between token sequences of tokens and documents, but I think you can take this sort of a step further and, um, yeah, so, so that's kind of like the broader framing and how we came up with this. Then also, I mean, obviously a super cool problem from like the machine learning natural language understanding side of things as well. I think it's been long suspected, said, however you want to call it, that transformers especially the large language models, they essentially regurgitate their training examples and kind of interpolate their training examples. Uh, was this in your mind as you went about that research or how does that connect to people saying, well, all GPT-3 does is essentially, you know, kind of reproduce a bunch of its training data sets? 
um, this <laughs> it is a, like a good question, like uh. But I guess like beyond memorization, we, 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 we are also kind of trying to test for like whether a model can make use of the memory because like if, if it's like, you know, you give a model a prompt and it generates like from that prompt is like, you know, associative memory and stuff. But like, like, you know, maybe understanding of documents is like maybe slightly beyond that. And we want to like just probe this ability of the models because, you know, if you can do zero shot retrieval here, it kind of, you know, implies that the model has, you know, understands like, re like reasons a little bit with what it has memorized. So I, I guess from an ML point, view is at least some kind of uh, benchmark like type of uh, task to kind of probe for for this type of ability in the model um, yeah so I think yeah now I had I had a bunch of questions maybe technical questions about the model so I suggest we kind of clarify these first before we go into more the, the broad or the the meanings behind the things you have this uh, contrastive objective here that you present in the dual encoders and you have the fully differentiable differentiable search index. Uh, have you tried or there are these things called cross encoders, right? Where I input a query and a document and I try to predict some sort of a score of how they go together. Uh, these usually work a lot better than the dual encoders themselves. What is the reason that you chose to not compare to any cross encoder type setups here? Uh, yeah, sure. That's that's a great question. I can take that. Uh, so the reason why we don't compare with cross encoders uh, is because generally cross encoders are pretty expensive. Uh, because you you cannot like cache the documents in advance, and and you have to, like you always have to uh you know uh compute for every query that comes in, you have to always compute with all the documents. So so uh there's 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 some like you know latency and some uh, compute cost restrictions for cross encoder. So like within the scope of DSI because DSI is basically uh, you know generating doc IDs so like we, we kind of uh, put that in the same ballpark as the, you know a similar uh, you know uh, compute cost as uh, you know like instead of doing a uh, like you kind of uh, instead of that you you kind of um, decode one uh, document so we consider that that computer compute cost like to be uh, more fair than you know having to pass through a, a pipeline of like and not like usually there's another re-ranker that, that does this cross attention uh, uh stuff and then that, that 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 definitely improves the performance and i don't think that at this point of time like we, we would beat a cross uh cross attention encoder uh, uh but but you know mainly cross encoders are just expensive so so that that's why we we consider it like out of scope for for this uh yeah that makes sense uh you hear you very elegantly you output just a list of document IDs. I was wondering, have you ever tried to actually produce the document itself that you're searching for instead of the document ID? Because I was wondering, because the model needs to learn this association between the input and the document ID, and it kind of needs to remember what text is in that document, right? There's no other way for it to really learn to associate text with document IDs. And I was wondering, is it a harder or an easier task for the model to directly output the text of the document? What do you think? I think there's there's uh, a lot of challenges with uh, decoding the text. I mean, you can obviously, uh, you know, constrain your beam search to only generate stuff that is like within a certain like stored memory and stuff and then you, you that, that's definitely possible or at least maybe the title of documents uh but then i think that would like uh we have not tried that in this uh, work and then you know i think this is definitely interesting and it's a good point that uh that you brought out but i think that uh at least within the scope of this we, we wanted to keep the, the the compute low and and you know like we already we, are, we have already enumerated a lot of possibilities uh in representing the doc ids and then that will probably be a different class of 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 a uh, uh, a style of, of doc ID representation like they're using like a uh, natural language that 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 can be that they can be like follow-up work uh, but the reason why is because the, the, the reason why we mainly don't explore that now is because like there's a lot of like additional challenges that 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 we need to think about and and so so we, we consider that like slightly out of scope for now uh, but but that's definitely like a, a great suggestion and and, and we, we think that is is uh, is also uh, potential to be quite potentially quite viable as well the, the only other thing I, I quickly add here, you know, going back to your, also your question about the cross in, encoders, um, you know, I mean, the, the, these models typically have limited, uh, you know, ability to uh, essentially model context length, right? So you, you're limited usually to 
passages or parts of documents, right? Um, by sort of modeling the document ID sort of as itself, you, you sort of open up the ability to model larger, more complex documents that you wouldn't be able to do sort of if you, uh, you know, we're treating everything as, as sequences of, of tokens, which again, sort of is the standard. Um, from the IR perspective, it's been from, again, my very biased opinion, very unsatisfying, the move away from sort of document retrieval to more passage retrieval that has happened recently. And a lot of that is just be, because the models have not been able to handle, you know, these uh, longer longer sequences uh, like they did before. So uh, this this takes us a little bit back to, to that. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously if you have longer documents and whatnot, it'd be even more challenging to, uh, to potentially decode that, that entire document uh, as, as well. Though isn't it, it isn't it a bit, because if I think of information retrieval in the, let's say the olden days, what I actually retrieved was keywords, right? And then I simply looked up which documents the keywords belonged to. And I had some heuristics of how I combined uh, for an entire document all the keywords that were inside of it. Couldn't this also, the move to passages be viewed as an expansion rather than a, a reduction in the scope of what I'm looking at? Do you see what I, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for 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 sure. Um, I, in yeah, I mean, obviously, there's always a way to aggregate from the passage level to the document level, and you know, I mean, this is the a very standard trick that people have done. I mean, people even did that back in the the you know olden days when you just had you know sort of keyword based indexes as as well. So um, for sure, but um, you know, then you also do have considerations of of efficiency, right? If you're going to then go and have to score dozens of passages per document, that suddenly explodes the cost versus just scoring sort of at the, at the document. So, so there's definitely trade-offs trade here. Is this, what this introduces is a level of redirection or a level of indirection in what the model needs to learn. So we no longer map sentences with the same meanings to each other, for example, we now have to learn this indirection, almost like addressing a document by a variable name. Even with your semantically meaningful identifiers, still, I believe, a, a large part, I, as a model, I need to remember just this identifier means something. It stands for a particular document. Do you see this applicable in maybe a broader context, you already allude in your paper that this could be part of a differentiable architecture. Where do you see this types of indirection based models going? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Actually, I was waiting to this talk about this because it's something I'm really excited about. So like, I mean, so the dog IDs, like using the dog IDs is like, you know, you, as you mentioned, it's some interaction, you store the, 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 the information in some, um, you know, some, some address, and then later on, you can just use that, that address as a, you know, in, in replace of like a long document and stuff. So I think one possible like avenue here is like, you know, like you, you can imagine like, uh, you know, like from tuning, uh, you know, like this few shot in context learning might require like, you know, like uh, you might need to like stuff 10 prompts, uh, 10 examples in, in, in this large language model. So like if this, um, um, you know, memory addressing type of arch like architectures that allows you to compress stuff to doc IDs and then, you know, you can use that as for like prompt tuning or you can use that for like retrieval um, uh, augmentation. So I, I think that, 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 that there might be more uh, use cases that can be explored like beyond retrieval. So this is more of, like a fundamental. I think that you you really um, you know um, uh, you 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 got it really very accurate. Where um, you know it's it's a class of models that uses this memory uh, you know kind of addressing stuff that they have that may have more uh, wider applications. So yeah, we are also quite excited about that. So yeah, uh, and we think that it can be like on top of my head is mainly like maybe like. Um, prompt tuning or like retrieval or method models that that could benefit from this. Uh, but yeah, as of now, we we don't we don't know that for sure. But yeah, this just a just a, just a guess. Yeah. In your paper, you describe the performance of your models, and the trend seems to be, if I recall this correctly, at least if we go to the result section real quick, that the larger models do perform better. However, the larger the data set gets, the less the improvements of, let's say, the DSI compared to the dual encoders are, if I understood this correctly. And in your data sets, you're still in the realm of you know, 300,000 documents. 
on an, for an IR problem, that is not really a large scale problem. Uh, do you think that in the future, people might be able to expand these models to also become better on larger document or collection instances? Or do you think that the application of these types of things might be, as you say, much more in as a differentiable component in something, maybe in an inform, maybe in a reinforcement learning agent or something like this? Like, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that as you seem to scale the document collection size, the benefits get weaker and weaker? Uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's a good question. So, uh, so we we kind of think that uh you know like it gets harder and harder like as you increase more documents i think that's also because uh you know the the model has to like you know memorize like you know or link link documents to like much more identifiers uh so to to to, to be honest like when the, the memorizing uh you know the interplay between memorizing and and retrieval is actually quite um you know um it's quite tough for the model to 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 learn and and you know as you can see that you need like an Excel XXL model to almost do this uh you know do well on, on this task but I think that uh you know to cope with larger documents there are multiple ways like one of them potentially is like um uh you know like sparse models make sure experts where you know you can just like increase the parameter size significantly without um you know increasing the compute so so we think that those are also promising to you know scale the, these models up uh to like maybe a multiple of a few million dogs uh, at least this, this is like estimate of, we don't have the results yet to show this but um this is what we we think uh, uh right now and, and yeah it, it's true that it gets harder and harder like like uh eventually so um we, we are we're not sure where the limit is yet and and we, we are also excited to find out like where's the <laughs> like where does this end and where, where's the limit of this yeah do you have an idea of how these things scale like if i have double the amount of documents, do I need double the amount of parameters or do I need an order of magnitude more parameters? Like, does this, does it, is it related linearly, exponentially? Do you have any idea of, of how this scales? Um, off the top of my head, I don't really, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to, like, put a number on it, like, like, right now. Uh, it's mainly, like, you know, the intuition is, is, uh, and it, 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 it also like a lot depends on like there's one part which is like the memorizing capability because like I, I believe that you know uh, uh, beyond this paper we have actually tried like uh, brute force memorizing like a couple million documents the model does memorize but then there's another like you, you need to factorize other part of like how well the model is able to make use of, of this information so uh, like it depends on like the, the data set depends on like many factors uh so it's very hard to to say but at least on on on, on nq like we, we, we don't have currently we don't have beyond like 300k uh, uh documents but like going from 100k to to uh to 300 like 20k documents is is like it was really like a uh uh not, like it wasn't really like exactly uh trivial so 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 we expect that um like going to like a 1 million docs like in the retrieval context would be like I, I okay if I had to put a number on it probably like you have to probably may, may need to go to like 32b or, or, or 32 billion parameters or something like that yeah if, if I had to like give a like a guess and an estimate um yeah yeah and, and obviously this is the you know sort of standard feedback we get when you know people take a look at the paper right you know lots of questions about the experiments, other data sets, scaling it up, you know, uh, I, you know, I don't want to give too much away. Obviously, we're aware of this. We're working on this. Uh, we hope to be able to have better answers to all of these questions sometime soon and also, you know, demonstrate that you know, this works more than just on, you know, on NQ, on some larger data sets um, and hopefully have much better, you know, sort of empirical basis for, uh, you know, understanding sort of limitations and scalability of, of these approaches. I have to ask just for it's a, I mean, it's a detailed question, but this NQ 100k data set, it seems to be just out of place a little bit. Like it seems like the numbers, they're just kind of off. Uh, there is, it looks really good with the 10k data set and the 320k data set. Uh, you can see, you know, things either get better or worse, maybe as you'd expect. But then the 100k data set, it just like, for example, the BM25 is all of a sudden a lot better. 
right, than either on the 10k data set and the 320k data set. And likewise, in a bunch of the other numbers, it's just sort of out of place. Do you have an idea of what's going on with the kind of the data set as such? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, like, I think if you look at the numbers right now, like the one of the points that stand out the most is the 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 the, the bucket of the atomic dog IDs, right? So, uh, the the second stuff, the, doc, the So if you, even you look at NQ three hundred twenty k, like you see a six point nine there, like randomly, right? So so the, the 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 fact is that for atomic dog IDs, like there were a lot of training like instability issues that uh that we had to overcome. So like there, there's a lot of variance and a lot of trainability issues and 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 we, we we tried our best to to overcome those uh and then like so sometimes you you get a base model to doing better than a it is is more of like optimization and like the interplay between um like um uh, you know like the retriever and memorization sometimes i mean i think if you know like coming from my experience of running like many of these like 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 logical reasoning or memorizing tasks sometimes the model gets it in the end and then sometimes it just that doesn't get it at the end by the end of the training so like I think there's there's generally like uh especially for atomic dog IDs because we initialize um you know like the the the, the soft max layer is like initialized from scratch and we use the pre-trained models and and also depending on the warm up and everything like so so it was really a challenge to optimize uh for the atomic dog IDs that's why you see generally like even on all three uh sets right there's there's like a very um I I think the the rest of them scales pretty like more nicely than the atomic dot ids but that, that that is actually a big challenge that 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 we had um I, i'm not sure if we actually like as explicitly point out this instability issue too much uh in in the paper but but i i, I think i remember like mentioning somewhere but yeah but at least uh you know the the middle the middle bucket is is, is really hard to train uh the, the second you, you bucket do is mention such. it yes yeah. The, the other thing to mention, I, I mean, if you look at the BM25 number, I mean, that's not trained in any way. It also obviously demonstrates very different performance there. I mean, the, the other thing is just, I mean, there, there is variance when you subsample the documents, right? So if you go from 320,000 to 100,000, you're subsampling, right? Maybe that was just a very lucky, good set of documents that were somehow was much more amenable and much more relevant in, in some you know way. So, um, I mean, it, you, if you do this with like any sort of I think standard IR system, right? You just start subsampling documents in, in different ways. You're going to get very different performance. I mean, it, probably the best thing would have been to subsample, you know, like five or six times, get some sort of error bars there to get a sense of what the variance is. So I, I suspect that, you know, probably it's a mix of the instability plus the just the fact that maybe this is a lucky or, you know, sort of different sample of, of documents than the 320K and the 10K. I actually have a have a have an answer about the there's there's one point which is a bit implicit. It's not like I, it's mentioned, but it's like it's not very obvious. But like so for NQ 10K and NQ 100K, those these are subsample sets from NQ, right? And then NQ 320K uses the official validation set, right? So there's like 10K and 100K is sub subsampled, and then like I, I'm not exactly sure how the validation set was constructed in NQ, but like so 10k and 100k like uses a, a, a like a similar way of sampling the the it's just random but like and the when you go to 320k like um it's actually using the official validation set so i, I don't know maybe it's like a, maybe a bit cleaner or like there's some difference in 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 the way this uh this uh, uh so so 10k 100k and 320k came from the official validation set so there might be some differences in uh in the way we sample and how the, the other people sample so uh yeah so I, I believe that you meant, you mentioned the training instabilities also at points throughout, and that might also explain a little bit as well why different methods are good at different tasks, right? You have, there's quite a bit of variance in which methods are better here or there, uh, quite a bit of variance in the numbers itself. Although what I see is, uh, very thoroughly the case is that the larger models tend to do better in general. Uh, whenever a model wins here with whatever way, it tends to be the larger models that per outperform the smaller models within the same buckets. Do you think that is a property of the larger models being pre-trained better? Because larger models also exhibit better language modeling behavior, right? And given that these are pre-trained, uh, I guess, T5 style checkpoints, 
uh, that that might be an improvement because as far as I understand it, your retrieval performance also in the part depends on the models being pre-trained to actually understand language, especially the zero shot ones. Or do you think that is mainly a, a, the main contributor is that with more parameters, I can memorize more documents. So could you comment on that? And maybe also a little bit on what do you think intuitively is going on inside of these models that they are even able to retrieve those IDs? So I think the pre-training definitely does contribute. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to to say like how many put a number on like how many percent it contributes to that. Uh, but I I, de I definitely think that like one way to tell is like probably to just rerun all the experiments with like in, like randomly initialize uh t uh you know the t five star models, right? Uh, I think at the very early stage, um, I mean it's not in the paper, but we, we did run some early experiments with like no pre-trained models, and uh, these models actually. Like it's way harder to to, to learn without the pre-training, and, and this is you know it's a, it's a common finding across uh you know not only in, in this context but you know in broader NLP and machine learning in general. So we think that the the pre-training does a lot of like uh, heavy lifting, and also the size um you know like with a larger model you also benefit more from like you know like it's, it's the composition of two different things helping each other. So because you 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 know you you are pre-trained and then you 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 also you know larger and then you benefit more from pre-training when when you are uh. For 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 this T five uh XXL models, so I I think that also probably contributes to like the the zero shot and 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 and, and stuff like that. So uh yeah, to, just to answer the 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 question uh um explicitly, I I think that the pre training does contribute a lot to 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 to, to this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the other thing we we don't have a good understanding of is you know after we fine tune uh you know on on these the GSI tasks, you know what sort of the model, what knowledge the model retains or does not retain, right? Um, it, you know, what was the nature of the model at that point? Um, as others have sort of asked this question, and I think it's a great, great question. Um, uh, I, I do suspect that some of the, the knowledge that, you know, sort of uh, obviously you pick up during pre-trainings is helping as, as you suggested, but um, but there may be other pre-training tasks that are even more amenable to sort of GSI than, you know, uh, sort of the standard uh, T5 pre-training. Did you have you attempted at introspecting these models in some way to kind of see whether you can find the documents, whatever it means in inside of these weights? Like, you know, I I imagine since I can query these models and they give me a doc ID that I, I need to be able to go and look inside the weights or something and, and find traces of these documents or something. Like, is there something you can say about the inner workings or, or is there something one can see in the attention maps or in the weights? I have a very disappointing answer because I wish I knew like where to look in the model as well. Uh, but, the, but the unfortunate thing is that I don't, don't know where this is safe in the model. Is it in the, you know, in the decoder layers? But I, I think intuitively it seems like, you know, because the decoder learns to like, like output dog IDs, I think the decoder does quite a lot of like heavy lifting uh, in the model, but like which weight is, is in and, and you know, like, you know, there's also like, you know, like the, the, the feed four layers are like key value memories and stuff. And then you can, you know, like somehow probe that. Uh, I think this is interesting for a lot, but unfortunately we, we don't <laughs> know where, where, where it's safe now in the model. Uh, yeah. Is there, um, what do you think if people want to get started with this, what do you think is like the smallest scale thing that would still give meaningful insights into the technique because a certain scale is necessary if I understand this correctly right um, but what would be kind of the minimal setup for anyone to get into this type of research like differentiable indexing and things like this mm. yeah that's a very good question actually um, so at what point where this gets, starts getting meaningful right which scale does it get meaningful I, I, I guess like this is just my personal opinion. This obviously like this is my sense of things, but uh, I I think starting at around like uh like Excel like three B uh is probably like uh a reasonable scale to start because uh okay actually I I don't really know why three B but like this is just from my experience running the experiments because like uh like three B and 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 eleven B um. Has has slightly different training dynamics compared to base and large, so uh, it's very hard to like quantify, like you know, like characterize this. Like, uh, it's very latent within me. Uh, 
but but I think like three B somewhere around three B is like you know like uh, medium scale tr models like uh, uh but like you know, like small and base probably will not be that meaningful but like I, I guess like starting from three B will be pretty nice yeah. So that is not it's not exactly small right I can't I can't really run this on my on my ten eighty at home but it's still I guess maybe maybe accessible to more people than just the biggest companies. Um, here you have you have a pretty interesting thing in your hierarchical uh, document IDs, and I understand this is not the end all be all. This is like an attempt at forging uh, meaningful document IDs, and you make very interesting requirements here. You have two requirements that uh, they retain some semantics, which the clustering I would say gives you right. It gives you a little bit of semantic thing, but then also you want to reduce the search space with each with each decoding step which is a property of autoregressive decoding, right? The first decoding step only needs to care about the big picture, the next one, the smaller and the smaller. Do you have an idea how much these two things play together or which one is kind of the important one? Because one could also, I think in the review, I raised the issue, you could reverse this in the, this document ID, which would give you the same meaningful document uh, identifier, but without this property of autoregressive decoding. Do you have an insight of which of the two properties might be the more important one here and which one is, or are they interacting with each other? So we have not like really like factorized both, both of them. Uh, yeah. I, I, I intuitively, I think that the, like segmenting the search space is more beneficial but i think they help each other uh i, I think this like is possible to also like come out ways of like ablating this uh but i think we did not like uh try try those yet yeah um if you if you look maybe a bit more high level um no wait i have one more question yeah this l right here because you have this very interesting graph that shows this thing right here uh, which document representations make the most sense and direct indexing. I, I also find it interesting that in your paper, you try out a lot of things. And then at the end, it seems like often the simpler things work better, um, which is which is a, a neat finding, I guess, a, 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 an encouraging finding for a lot of people. Although I was surprised to see that if you index fewer tokens of the documents, it tends to perform better what's because that shouldn't be right uh what's the problem here what's the problem that prevents us from indexing longer sequences of the documents so i i, I get okay so, so this is just like uh my, my 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 thoughts on this is that like going up to one to eight and and above uh makes the, the training harder uh, like we also observe this in memorization like you know looking at the training accuracy of memorization so I, I think by and, and there's going to be like quite uh, like some uh, like examples or uh, we, we don't know how many examples but like there's going to be like uh, some examples that can be solved easily by the first 32 tokens or 64 tokens so I think that the model like okay this is just a guess I, I'm not like really 100% sure about this but it's like the model prioritizes like like uh getting the one in you know like like correctly rather than trying to like fit 256 tokens and then like not being able to solve like like anything right like even the easy one so so i i think this is this might be might be what's happening uh and then like this 32 i, I will not like over index on like this 64 or 32 because it's probably going to be like very data set um dependent and also the invert, inverted index like we, I, I saw you on your you know review that, that you were surprised that the inver, inter, inverted index didn't work right but this might be like an artifact of like this data set like and and uh you know like it is is maybe the simpler approaches work here but like when we when we go when we scale up when we go to some something like uh harder or more documents or just the the the, the structure of the data set is different then perhaps the inverted index like what what would help uh so so i think that there's there's a lot here that that you know we, we are just showing like like a, a a a slice of the the data points, but like but like uh, I wouldn't over over index or like oh DSI only works when the document length is like short or or something. But like I I think this is data set dependent and and uh and 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 for for sure I I believe that for other data sets you you need longer sequence length. Um, yeah. If you look ahead a little bit, and you came into this, uh, you told me at least that um you 
you just wanted to know certain things, like you had some questions, is this even possible and so on. My question is, is there an end goal here? If you look into the future, maybe two, three, five years or so, you, you develop this a little bit, hardware gets better and so on. What's the, what's the outlook? What's the, the North Star that this could lead to? Um, yeah, so I'm going to share a bit, and then I think Don surely has thoughts about this as well. So I I I will leave some for him. Uh, so I I think like one of the north star here is like because like you know like retriever is generally like slightly decoupled away from like other NLP tasks. Like you know people are unifying models, they are going for T5, six everything is six to six, right? But like when it comes to retrieval, uh, you always like have this separate infrastructure of uh of uh, you know like dual encoders and then you have to compute like you know ranking metrics and then the whole infrastructure is always very different from like say like like machine translation or, or text generation stuff so like i think this like uh, at least for me like one one aspect of like uh it is to be able to like conveniently do retrieval uh in a way that it, like you don't have a you don't need to have a separate in infrastructure you can just co-train your retrieval get all the metrics you need get a competitive performance to like do encoders uh while you know like still being able to do machine translation at the same time so I, okay, maybe maybe machine translation may not be the best example, but maybe you want like you know some NLU, some some uh, some uh, question answering model like you know end to end or you know like or synthesizing uh, like from the doc IDs, you you can you know like generate doc IDs together with text and then like you know like maybe substantiating the, the text with with uh, with with uh, maybe doc IDs like you know like learning to cite and stuff like that. So so I think these are like pros like. The, the you know like uh, visions the vision that that you know I I'm pretty uh, excited about so um, yeah maybe Don can can yeah. chime in yeah I mean um you know, going back to what I mentioned at the sort of at the start right um this is part of sort of this this exploration of you know what what's possible um and you know if you play this forward uh, we, we we have no idea right what, what's going to happen um I mean one potential outcome is that you know. It, it turns out that this is, is a great way of actually modeling um, a lot of the things that the sort of IR community, again, in, in the past has sort of modeled um, in terms of documents and terms and, you know, sort of all, all of all of this. Um, and that, you know, kind of uh, th this type of approach, um, you know, could, could you know, um, be, you know, the sort of a way of unifying sort of retrieval and scoring right because you, you mentioned cross encoders right today usually as, as you mentioned earlier right you, you have this sort of cascaded approach where you do retrieval first and then you do scoring next this does everything together jointly right and that kind of simplifies things um and it would be nice i think in the future to be able to have a way of doing that all sort of end-to-end -end in a highly differentiable you know sort of way um, the, the other thing that, I mean, is, is obvious here is that there's a lot of attention and interest recently with, you know, retrieval, augmented, sort of everything. Um, the idea being fewer parameters and more reliance on sort of external, uh, you know, memory or storage in, in some way, right? This, this is kind of diametrically opposed to that. Um, I think there's pros and cons to both of the approaches, and it'll be very interesting, I think, to see as we continue to explore both directions, sort of what are the benefits of, uh, of of each of these things and how, how maybe the two of them can come together as, as he was suggesting, you know, maybe DSI could be a sort of inner loop on a retrieval augmented uh, approach uh, in, in the future. And if you look ahead, maybe a bit more short term, what are the hardest problems that are still outstanding to make the next steps of progression here? There's, there's actually a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good, right? As a researcher, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of like 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 things that that we want to solve, and there's still a lot of things that keep me up at night. So, uh, I I think there there are a couple of like pressing ones, like how do you update documents? Uh, how do you uh you know, and then solving the trainability issue, and then just solving the scale to do like you know, I I'm hoping that you know like going to sparse models, like something like switch transformer, you can just handle like. 20, 30 million docs like off the bat. Uh, but so I, I mean, I'm like, I think scaling is, 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 is a, you know, like a sh more short term to mid term thing that, that we, we, we want to solve. Uh, so updating, scaling, and also like the interplay between like retrieval and understanding a little bit more about this zero shot uh, behavior and, and also understanding where is in the model, as you mentioned, like, like understanding this behavior of these models. I think these are like 
in the in uh immediate like next steps that 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 I, I think like this that you know to you know take this uh idea further like I think to, these things need to be uh like to some extent like solved or at least like f- f- like figured out somehow yeah yeah and, and and obviously I mean some of the questions you brought up here are you know things that are uh, actively being thought about and explored um you know one of the things that you know we were just talking about was you know indexing the first like 32 tokens right I, I I yeah so so just understanding you know the properties of the model across more data sets um and kind of like what are the best practices here I, I think are also like very immediate term things that uh that, that we'll need to do to just get a basic understanding of this beyond kind of this initial kind of proof of concept if you will that that this crazy idea is even you know kind of feasible um, is there any anything else that maybe we haven't touched on yet that you would like people to take away from the paper uh, that they shouldn't go without knowing? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> Nothing that I can. Yeah, talk yeah, about. yeah. No, I can't think of anything right now. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Is uh can people even if the models are, are large, could could people get into this? Like, is is the code somewhere available, or are you uh, planning so, to make it? So this is like subject to approval, but uh, yep. we, we we do have plans to make the code available sometime in mm-hmm. uh, Q two uh, of this year. Uh, but but yeah, this is all like subject to approval. We have not gotten the approval yet as of now, but uh, this is our plan. Uh. To, to release it in Q2, yeah. The fight with the lawyers. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a history cool. of, you know, of releasing, uh, of open sourcing, you know, many of the, you know, I, I, you've reviewed several of our papers in, in the past, right? I mean, we, we do have a history of, you know, uh, being able to release the code. It's just a matter of, you know, sort of checking uh, various boxes and we're committed to this. We have already had folks reaching out, you know, trying to replicate this and we want to make it easy for everyone so that they can, you know, sort of get going with this. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really interesting area and hopefully this will stimulate some additional fun research. Yeah, I was I was in, in Google for a while. I know I know it can be a hassle to to open source anything um, and the amount of approvals you need to get. So props that you even like want to go through with it. It's pretty cool. All right. So uh, Don and Yi, thank you very much for being here. This was very enlightening and I hope people uh, had fun and I hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for thank inviting me. So yeah. yeah. This is great. It is great. Yeah.